Hello and welcome to World Card Making Day or Happy World Card Making Day. Um, I love that there is a day that is dedicated to paper crafters like us. Um, I'm just gonna give it a minute or two, get let a few people log in. Boy, 10 a.m. came quick on a Saturday morning. Uh, let's see, set my computer up so I can see your comments. Good morning, Mary Liz. I can always count on you on to be here. Okay, let's see. Here we go. Good morning, Beth. Let's turn my sound off so that I don't hear myself talking. All right. Um, okay, so today we're going to do something a little bit different than the usual Friday Facebook Live just to celebrate World Card Making Day. And I thought it would be fun to choose a sketch. So I went on Pinterest and I was looking at a bunch of different sketches and I chose this one which I posted on my Facebook page yesterday afternoon, just to give you guys a heads up so that you can kind of maybe just plan. Um, because what I would like to do is I've got a few prizes and I would like to see what you guys create. So I thought I'm gonna create a couple projects with this sketch and I've got a couple others that I'm going to share that I created following the sketch. I'm gonna talk a little bit about how I use sketches um, and I'm, I've actually converted this sketch into a scrapbook page as well, um, which isn't quite finished. I wanted to finish it this morning, but I didn't have time. Um, so I'll post that in the comments later on today um, so that you can see how I take even a card sketch and use it in my scrapbooking as well. There's a ton of different ways that you can interpret sketches. So we'll chat a little bit about that. Um, but what I would like is over the course of the weekend, so because it's a long weekend here in Canada, I thought it would be fun to give you guys the weekend to create something following this sketch. And then you can share it in the comments of this Facebook post and um, I will draw a few prizes. So I've got a couple little things, product prizes, but I can only send these to Canadians. And then if I draw an American or somebody from somewhere else, then um, I will send them the cards that I create today okay uh, because I can't send product across any borders okay so let's go ahead and get started I'm gonna flip the camera down so that you guys can see what I'm doing uh, let's see here that that Give it a minute to catch up so that I can see what you guys are seeing. Make sure that the angle is good. Actually, and I'm gonna go run and turn on another light, just a sec. All right. I don't know if that makes a ton of difference, but we'll see. Okay, let's try to make this a little straighter. Okay. Oh, Beth, you messaged me a card you made. I'll have to check. I'll check it out afterwards. I love to see what you guys create. Okay, so like I said, this is the sketch that we're going, this is going to be our starting point. Oh, that didn't make it any better, did it? Hang on, let's move this up. We move that up. Hopefully that will be better. Okay, so this is our starting point for today. Um, and like I said, I'll talk about how I like to interpret sketches. Sometimes they're just a starting point. Sometimes I follow it exactly as is, and sometimes I just go in a completely different direction. But a sketch can sometimes be a great resource just to give you something to start with. Even if it's just, okay, I like this angled piece, or I like this flag, and that's all you use from it. It doesn't really matter. Um, there's no right or wrong way to use a sketch. 
So, um, this is a Sweet Sunday sketch challenge, which is an older sketch challenge. And what I will do is after we're done the video, in the comment section, I will post the link to this sketch so that you can see what other people created using this sketch as well. So that you have more inspiration than just, um, than just my cards. All right, and like I said, I want you guys to use this sketch. You have three days, so I will um, draw a winner on Tuesday morning. So you have all day today, Sunday and Monday to post your version of this sketch um, in the comment section of this post here. All right, I can't wait to see what you guys create. Okay, so today I pulled out, well actually yesterday when I was planning this, I pulled out this bundle, the Farmhouse Christmas Bundle. To play with so this is what we're using on two of the cards and then I've got a couple others to show you as well okay so let's go ahead and get started okay pull out all my pieces is anybody crafting along with me because that's another great um, great thing to do is you can just sit there set your computer up or your phone up iPad whatever you've got and craft right along while you're watching a Facebook live all right do you guys want to see the card first or do you want to be surprised oh you use the same sketch <laughs> isn't that funny okay I'm I'm a little distracted here okay let me see here all right so first of all my card base is a piece of mossy meadow cardstock and just a standard size card, so five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And then I've got, surprise us, okay, so I won't show you the card until it's done. All right, so then I've got a piece of the, the Farmhouse DSP. So this is the great DSP, of course this pattern doesn't have any plaid on it, but there's some great plaid patterns in this paper pack. So this piece is cut four inches by five and a quarter inches. And then I'm going to trim it at an angle to get that angled piece. So, and I'm not going to measure. I'm just going to stick it in here and pick an angle that I think I like. That looks good. And then this piece is still good that you can go on and you can create a different, different project with that. Or you could use it on the inside of your card too. All right, and then I've got a piece of very vanilla cardstock that measures four inches by five and a quarter. And I'm going to just place that there for now. This piece measures one and a half by three inches. This is also from the Farmhouse DSP. And I've got my triple banner punch. I'm going to slide it in. But if you don't have this punch, you can always just trim it with scissors. And then I'm going to just add a little bit of adhesive behind here, tuck this piece in behind. I like to position everything to see how it's going to look. And also to make sure it's straight. Okay. And then I'll add adhesive to the rest of this and stick it down to my white layer, or my white layer, my vanilla layer. I'm so looking forward to this afternoon. We're going over to my parents' place for turkey dinner. Oh my gosh, I, turkey dinner is my favorite. I love turkey dinner. Can't wait turkey and mashed potatoes and stuffing with gravy oh my gosh it's my favorite meal okay so now i've got some of our cherry twine that comes in the farmhouse twine pack you get three different colors in that pack actually you get cherry cobbler mossy meadow and very vanilla and i'm going to wrap this around twice and then tie my bow Thank you, I will enjoy, Beth. Mm. 
What kind, what's, what's your guys' favorite meal? Do you have a favorite? I'm sure everybody has a favorite. It doesn't necessarily have to be a, um, a meal that you celebrate or that you usually have when you celebrate. It can be any kind of meal. I'm a big potato girl. I love potatoes. Okay, so I've got that. And then now I'm going to work on my, actually, let's add this to the front here. And then I will work on my focal point. Actually, no, we're not going to. Okay, uh, let's see here. First thing I want to do is I've got a piece of cherry cobbler, just a scrap piece. And I'm going to use the Starburst Punch. Mary Liz says, my favorite part is the next day turkey sandwiches with yams. Yeah, leftovers are always great. And turkey pot pie, oh my gosh. I love turkey pot pie too, with leftover turkey. Mm -hmm. So good. Oh, it's making me hungry to talk about all this food. Okay, so I've got that. And then I'm pulling in a piece of vanilla. Let's move this out of the way so I can make sure that you guys can see. And I'm pulling in the cherry cobbler ink. And this stamp here, let me show you. This one here, wishing you a season full of peace, wonder, and love. Merry Christmas. I love this greeting and that image. So I'm gonna stamp it in Cherry Cobbler. good impression there perfect and then I'm gonna give this a little bit of a clean because I want to stamp it again in mossy meadow on a scrap of mossy meadow so I've got a scrap here just set that aside for a minute And really all that I'm concerned about is getting that Merry Christmas. I don't know I don't need the whole the whole thing. Okay. So it doesn't matter if I ha don't have that bottom bit because I'm going to cut the Merry Christmas out. Let's give this a clean because I'm gonna need it again. Alright. And then I'm going to use my two inch circle punch to punch this out. And for this image, there is a framelit in the coordinating framelit set. This one here that cuts that out perfectly. So I'm going to pull in my big shot and cut that out. Okay, so we'll position that on there. And it fits perfectly so that it doesn't cut. If you cut if you stamp the whole image, you're not going to get those words above and below, and it gives you this gorgeous stitched frame around the words. Okay, so we'll move this guy out of the way. All right, so now let's start assembling. So we've got our greeting. I'm going to stick that flat onto the Cherry Cobbler Starburst. I love these two punches together, the Starburst and the two inch circle punch. I love the Starburst. I love that it's not a scallop. I love scallops as well, but the Starburst is nice because then you can make it a little bit more gender neutral. I find scallops a little bit more feminine and I'm just looking for my dimensions. Okay, has anybody picked up dimensionals when, now that they're on sale? 10% off and the mini dimensionals as well, but only until tomorrow. It's a great deal. I mean, you can never have enough dimensionals and they don't go bad. They don't dry out or anything, so they'll last. It's a great time to stock up. 
Okay, so now I'm using dimensionals to just pop this right up onto here. And then this guy is going to go on here. So this is why I didn't stick this down, is because I wanted to be able to adjust this twine based on how high I want my focal point. So I want it to be, actually probably just a little bit lower, and I want that bow to move over to the left just a little bit. I'm trying to get it so that the twine is kind of right where the center of this bit is. Okay, I'm happy with that. So now I'm gonna put a dimensional here and here so that it's above and below the twine. So this particular card that I'm doing is, I am basically copying the sketch exactly as it's intended to be used. So I didn't really make any alterations I just, oh, that is crooked. There we go. I just used it exactly as it's intended to be used. So that's a great way to use a sketch, especially if you've got, like you're in a slump and you just don't know where to start um, and you just have no ideas. Although I don't find that we have that problem too much anymore with Pinterest. Thanks to Pinterest, we've got lots of inspiration at our fingertips. Um, but I do love to work with sketches because sometimes it can be a starting point. And you might start with the intent of going in one direction and then completely end up going in a different direction. Okay, and then I've got a piece of four by five and a quarter inch, very vanilla cardstock, And this is for the inside of the card. And all I'm gonna do is I've got that little greeting in this stamp set that says from our home to yours and I'm just going to ink it up with some cherry cobbler and stamp it right in the center it's pretty small on that big piece of vanilla cardstock but that's okay it gives me lots of room to write a message to someone special okay so then this is going to go on the inside Oh, got some static on my table here. Okay, so that will go in the center. And then I cut a piece of DSP so that I could decorate my envelope because you know how much I love decorating my envelopes. So a two and a quarter inch by six inch piece of the coordinating DSP or the matching DSP. I'm just gonna line it up with one side the flap on and then trim around the edges does anybody else love doing this it's a great way to use up those extra little strips of DSP and it's so pretty it really dresses up an envelope I've really been trying to make an effort to decorate my envelopes when I have everything out that I'm using. There we go. So that is, here's the sketch and here's my interpretation. So this is copying exactly as is. So I have the ribbon going across instead of a strip. I have the angle cut, I've got the banner and then I've got my focal point. Okay, so that's one interpretation of it. So we'll set that aside and then move on to the next one. So we're using the same colors. Okay. So for this one, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece of crumb cake, which measures four by five and a quarter and I'm going to run it through the Big Shot using the corrugated embossing folder. All 
right, so this embossing folder is actually found in the same on the same page as this the rest of this suite. And it gives you this beautiful corrugated look. Similar to when, if you've been a long time stamper, remember we used to carry the crimper? So it's similar to that. And I just got a notification that my computer is about to die. My battery is low. I might have to pull out my phone so that I can see your comments. Okay. So I do find that this is a bit on the tight side. You do have to be a little bit careful with it. You can spritz to avoid your cardstock splitting if you find that it splits. Um, what you can do is you can spritz it with water and um, that will help prevent, it just softens it a little bit. It will help prevent it from um, splitting. Sorry, just give me a minute here. I'm going to pull up my phone so that I can, oh, let's turn the sound off. We don't want the sound. Okay, there, I should be able to see them from my phone now. Okay, all right, so now I'm gonna pull in my paper cutter and do that angle cut. And again, just choosing the angle that I think I want it to be cut at. Oh, this is, I used my other paper cutter when I did this last time, okay. So your paper cutter doesn't cut through the corrugated one very easily. So we snipped it. I have my line, so I'll just use my paper snips and finish that off. So you might want to cut your angle before you put it in the through the big shot. Okay, so now I have another piece to use again on another project. Okay, so I've got that and then I've got a piece of cherry cobbler cardstock which I'm going to add some adhesive to because I'm going to add this in behind. And I want it to be just a little bit of a border like this. Let's fix this. So about like that. Make sure it's even. Looks good. Okay, so now I'll just trim off this excess. All right, and then I've got some of our burlap striped ribbon and I'm going to cut about four inches. And then I'm gonna cut it in half. I'm gonna add some adhesive in behind here. So instead of doing that cardstock strip, that I did the last time, I'm going to use ribbon down here. Just like that. Oh, I need a little bit more adhesive. Okay, and then because this adds a bit of bulk, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a mini glue dot on top of the ribbon, but then dimensionals everywhere else. So that will hold the ribbon down to my cardstock. And then the dimensionals will kind of give it all that same level. My card base is a piece of Mossy Meadow. Again, a standard size card, so five and a half by eight and a half. Peel off those backings. And then 
I'm going to just put it in the center so that I've got about an eighth of an inch like that okay so now we are going to work on our focal point so I'm going to use my two inch circle punch and punch a vanilla circle and then I'm going to save that because I'm going to use that vanilla again. I'm going to use my Starburst again and some Cherry Cobbler cardstock. And this gets mounted to this just flat. And then we'll set that aside and then I'm going to bring in my images so I have the tree from the same stamp set and the car and my memento ink and I'm going to stamp the car on the vanilla cardstock Make sure it's really well inked okay and then I've got a strip of crumb cake cardstock here that I'm going to stamp my tree on. All right. Okay, so now I'm going to do some coloring and I'm going to use my Stampin' Blends. My desk, if you can see my desk right now, man, it's crazy. I've got so much stuff all over it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the crumb cake, just the, uh, I think it's the light, light crumb cake. And I'm just going to lightly color these branches just to give them a little bit of a different shade than the rest of the cardstock. And if you've used, if you haven't used your blends on crumb cake cardstock, you'll find that it lightens significantly. It's almost like it soaks the color in more than it does on the vanilla or the, the whisper white. Okay, so I will set that aside because we're going to die cut that afterwards. And then actually while I've got the crumb cake, I'm going to, I'm just going to pull out a scrap piece of paper that's underneath here. Okay, so I'm just going to color the inside of the car and I don't have one of these pre-cut so you're going to have to watch me color the, or pre-colored and cut. So I'm going to have to color the whole thing live. So bear with me. Hopefully you're crafting along with me. Okay, so the inside is done with the crumb cake. And then I'm gonna do a light, just colored light with old olive all over the Christmas tree. Not being too careful to make sure I cover in the whole thing, doesn't matter. And then add in just a few little highlights with the dark crumb cake or not dark crumb cake, old olive, sorry. And then blend with the light. And my light old olive is almost out. I'm gonna have to replace it here. Okay, and then I'm gonna use light smoky slate and I'm going to color the grill. I don't, I'm not familiar with cards. That's what I would call this. Whatever this thing is, just add a little bit there. And then for the fender, And then just along this side bit, the steering wheel, and then the back of the mirrors. I'm gonna add a bit of shading with the dark smoky slate.
and then blend. Okay, and then I'm gonna do a bit of daffodil just for the light, so it looks like the lights are on. Oh, and I colored around the lights with Smoky Slate as well. I really should have had one of these done. Okay, and then I'm gonna use black and I'm gonna color around the tires. And I'm using light black around these bigger portions. And then I'll use the dark black for like here and here and where I think it would be darker. There isn't a whole lot of difference between the light and the dark black. Okay, so then I'll take the dark black and color in those other little bits. And you see that I much prefer the brush point, like some of these things that I'm coloring are very small, but I feel like I have more control with the brush tip. I can just do it very, very lightly, but I know some people prefer doing those smaller bits with the fine tip. Okay, and then I'm going to use Cherry Cobbler and I'll start with my light and color in the truck. Mary Liz, if you're still here, did you end up finding, you said you were hoping to be able to find a, um, a turkey breast, a pre-cooked turkey breast for your turkey dinner. Did you end up finding one? Okay. Sorry guys, this probably isn't very entertaining watching me color here. If you're watching the replay, at least you can just fast forward through it. Not yet? Well, hopefully you find one. Okay. And then I'll go back in and just add a bit of shading. I'm not gonna do too much here. Just to speed things up. Okay, that's good enough. All right. Put that away so now these are both ready to be cut so and there's framelits for both so I don't need to fussy cut them so I'm gonna pull out the tree and the car and pull out my big shot what are you and your BFF doing Marie Liz Have we got fun plans? All right, so we will stick the car on here closer to this end. Use the framelit, line it up. That looks good. And then I'll put the tree over here. Okay. All right, I'm 
beating this through. Pop out my tree. And then I've got my car. Okay. Going for coffee. Oh, you're going to buy towels. Awesome. Oh, I love shopping for things for my home. Next to stamping, I think uh, home decorating, like that kind of stuff is my favorite thing to do. And coffee's always good. Okay, so now I'm pulling in my card base. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick just a little bit of adhesive down the tree trunk. Tuck that excess behind. And this is gonna go right about here. Oh, my tree didn't cut very, I didn't line that up very well. Okay, and then I'm gonna use some more adhesive on my car to stick it down in front. I want it about like that. So now I'm gonna put flat adhesive along the top and then a dimensional on the bottom because we've got dimension already on here. And I try, if I can avoid it, I will try to do, try to avoid um, using a double layer of dimensionals because then I find it costs extra for postage. Oh, and I wanted to put some adhesive behind the tree. Let's tuck a mini glue dot on there. Stick that down. Okay, so now we just need a greeting. And I've got the little greeting that says, what does it say here? Thoughts of happiness and joy to you and yours. And I'm gonna stamp that in Mossy Meadow. On a piece of vanilla cardstock. And then I'm going to use this classic label punch and punch it out. It fits perfectly in this punch. I'm gonna line it up a little bit closer to the left. And then put a little bit of it, actually we're gonna use mini glue dots. Put a little bit of, a couple mini glue dots on the back of this and it's going to go in the bottom here and then I'm going to trim off that this one end okay and then I've got a four by five and a quarter inch piece of vanilla and I'm going to use this image again but all I want is just the Merry Christmas so I am going to mask off a portion of this so I've just got some scotch tape and I'm gonna put it along the words on the top. And then another piece along the words on the bottom. I'm gonna pull in my Cherry Cobbler ink. And I'm going to ink it up. So this is a great way to um, use only a portion of your stamps. You can mask off certain parts. You can use your markers if you've got the markers as well. You can use the markers and just ink up the Merry Christmas. However, I don't like the way the markers work on photopolymer stamps. So the important part after you do this is you need to remember to peel off the tape. If you don't, you're going to end up with this big these big blotches on your cards. Hey, Shara. Okay. So now I'm going to line it up in the center. I apologize, my head's in the way, in the center of my vanilla piece and stamp down and I will just have the Merry Christmas. So this stretches, you, having this idea stretches the use of your stamps as well. And see how clean that is? Um, remember we use this on the first card and we use the whole image and all I did was just clean it on our chamois and there's no leftover residue. When I was using um, our old scrub, Stampin' Scrub, you'd clean it on there and you'd think it would be clean, but you'd always, if I was doing any kind of 
um, using any markers or masking or anything, I would have to huff and make sure that there was no residue left on these two pieces before stamping. Otherwise, I would just get some ghosting around the edges. But with that new chamois, you don't need to do that. It's great. Great for so many reasons. All right. So add some adhesive here. And this goes in the center. Just like that. And another card done. So let me pull in the first one that we made and clear off my desk a little bit here so that I don't have a bunch of distractions. Okay, so here was the first one that was a literal, like I literally copied this sketch. Um, and then this one, again, it's very close, except I eliminated that strip across the side. Um, I used ribbon down here. I added this little bit here, and then I added, well, my focal point cluster kind of had the, had the tree added to it as well, okay? And then I added my greeting down here. So those are a couple ideas, and then I have a couple more here. Okay, so let's move that guy out of the way. We'll move these guys out of the way. Here was another one I created. This really simplifies it. So for this one, all I used was just that angle bit and then the banner bit. I added some ribbon around the edge. I put my focal point down here and then added a little wreath. On the inside, I added some more greetings and another little wreath. And here's another little tip. Um, if you cut your card like this and you wanna wrap twine all the way around, if you use your paper piercer and poke a hole in the spine, and then you use a flosser, a flosser like you use when you have braces. Um, you can just feed that twine through, or you can use a needle and thread as well, or a needle and, and thread the twine through the needle. Um, feed that through that little hole and you can still wrap it around. Because I realized, I knew I wanted what I wanted to do, but I forgot that I should have cut my card um, so that the, the fold was at the top, but I made it work. All right, so there's another idea for that sketch. And then, because I've been working with snowflakes lot, late, lots lately, I had some leftover pieces on my desk, and so I created this one. So again, um, it's an adaptation of the sketch. So I went with the angle bit and the focal point. That's really all that I went with. Here you can see um, I've embossed on shimmery white cardstock. So I use that framelit, and there's a video coming out next week that shows you how to do that, because I don't think I showed you how to do that yesterday. Um, so I used that framelit to emboss this background, and then this was that shimmery blue background that I created yesterday on Facebook Live. This I had done, it's the exact same focal point that I did on another card that I had done an extra one, so I added that on here. And then look at these, these are our pearls, but then I used my Stampin' Blends in the Highland Heather, the dark Highland Heather, Heather, and colored them in. So with Stampin' Blends, you can make our pearls or our rhinestones any color that you want. Well, any color I guess that we have in Stampin' Blends. So I made some Highland Heather rhinestones and added those there instead of having that banner that came down. Okay. So those are the four cards that I created using this sketch. And like I said, I will post a scrapbook page following this sketch. I don't know if you guys can see all of those. Um, later on today, it's almost finished. I just have a few other things to add. Um, and I'd love to see what you guys create. So remember, if you create something following this sketch between now and the end of Monday and you post a picture in the comments section, um, then you will have the opportunity to win a small prize. So I've got some red rhinestones and some colored doilies to give away. And then for the for anyone who is outside the country, if you happen to win, then you'll get the two cards that I make today. All right, so hopefully you guys play along. I love sketches. The other thing that you can do, which I meant to create a sample of, but then forgot, is you can rotate the sketch. So you can take this idea, but make it landscape. So there's so many different interpretations. This doesn't even have to be a layer. You could stamp at an angle. Um, like there's so many different possibilities. So I can't wait to see what you guys create and I really hope that you share it with me and everybody else. 
Um, but in the meantime, I hope you all have a fabulous Thanksgiving weekend. Enjoy your turkey dinner or ham dinner if that's what you guys do. And I will see you next Friday. All right? Take care. Have a great weekend.